Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. In this video, we're going to look at Australia's hot past, which is being hidden by the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. There's lots of headlines in the press this week saying Australian temperatures could reach a scorching 50 degrees by the end of the century. That is 122 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very hot. We better take a look at Australia's temperature history. This graph is a plot of daily temperatures from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Global Historical Climatology Network database. There are 26 Australian cities and towns with long-term temperature records in that database. And this graph shows all of those temperature readings which were above 105 degrees Fahrenheit. That set of stations has recorded 19,168 temperatures over 105 degrees since the middle of the 19th century. Going from left to right along the x-axis, we go from the year 1856 to the present. Along the y-axis, temperatures increase from 105 to 125 degrees. You can see that most of the really hot temperatures in Australia occurred before the year 1910. Now let's look at the official Australian temperature graph from the Bureau of Meteorology. There are lots of things wrong with this graph, but the thing I'd like you to focus on right now is that it begins at the year 1910. So now let's go back to the previous graph. Remember that most of these hot temperatures we were looking at occurred before the year 1910. So in this graph I highlighted in yellow all of the pre-1910 temperatures which the Bureau of Meteorology is hiding. You can see that Australia's hottest temperatures are being hidden. The hottest one occurred at Mildura, Victoria on January 7, 1906. The temperature at Mildura that day was 52 degrees Celsius or 123 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's go back again and look at the headline we started with. Australian temperatures could reach a scorching 50 degrees by the end of the century. But now we know that amongst the data being hidden by the Bureau of Meteorology, there was a 52 degree reading in 1906. This record temperature was very well documented at the time. Here's some smiling people in Victoria who made a sign commemorating the record temperature. Newspaper headlines touted the record. The Argus, Saturday, January 6, 1906. Victorian record broken. Mildura, 123 degrees. January 8, 1906, the heat wave, hot at Mildura. At Mildura, the shade temperature on Saturday was 124 degrees, deaths from the heat. Note that some people reported the temperature at 123 degrees and others did at 124. The actual measurement was 123.5. The age, Monday, January 8, 1906, extensive heat wave, a new Mildura record, 124 in the shade. More than a century later, the Bureau of Meteorology didn't like this record, so they tried to erase it. They wrote a paper based on complete arm-waving speculation about reasons why they didn't want to believe the record temperature. Their speculation was based largely on their belief that different types of housing screens produce different temperatures. However, they admitted in their paper that they didn't actually know which type of screen was being used. And they also admitted that it required a special set of circumstances for one type of screen to produce the wrong temperature. The bottom line of their paper was that, without citing any actual evidence, they knew better what the temperature was in Mildura on January 7, 1906, than the people who actually took the readings at the time. The standard dishonesty, hubris, and arrogance which we see all the time from government climate scientists. However, their paper did contain a few useful pieces of information. They said that South Australia did reach 50.6 degrees Celsius a few weeks later in 1906. And they also mentioned Black Tuesday on January 23, 1906, when huge areas of Victoria burned and many people died. One family in Victoria lost six children in the fires that day. And here was a newspaper article from January 24, 1906, discussing the great heat and the bushfires. Now let's go back to the bigger picture of long-term Australian temperatures. This graph shows the hottest temperature recorded at all of those 26 stations during each year going back to 1877. You can see that the years 1903 through 1906 were extremely hot. You can also see that the hottest temperatures in Australia have declined since the middle of the 19th century. And we can also see that the Bureau of Meteorology is hiding the hottest temperatures in Australia, which occurred before the year 1910. Let's look at a few individual stations. This is the hottest temperatures at Bourke, New South Wales. You can see that Bourke's hottest temperatures occurred before the year 1910. All this data is now being hidden. Same story at Darwin on the north coast, and at Alice Springs near the center of the country. And here's the graph for Mildura. Mildura was very hot before the year 1910. The Bureau of Meteorology is hiding a lot of extremely hot weather. 
These temperatures destroy their global warming alarmism, so they simply had to go. Now let's look at the percent of days over 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius at all of these 26 stations. You can see that the likelihood of hot weather in Australia has declined sharply over the last 130 years. And you can see that the hottest weather occurred before the year 1910. So there should be no surprise that the Bureau of Meteorology is hiding all this very hot weather which occurred before the year 1910. Now let's look at what was going on around the year 1906 to produce these extremely hot temperatures. There was a tremendous drought occurring at the time which began around the year 1891. That drought is commonly referred to as the Federation Drought. Here's an article from the West Australian, Thursday, November 30th, 1899. Drought in Queensland. Stock in pitiable condition. Reports from the Central District state that the prolonged drought has so parched the country that scarcely a blade of grass is seen for several hundred miles around. In 1892, millions of rabbits died from the heat and drought. Here is a dust storm which occurred in New South Wales in 1903. It looks very similar to 1930's dust storms in the United States. Rainfall in 1901 and 1902 was lowest on record in much of eastern Australia. And around the same time, the United States was having one of our worst heat waves on record. New York Times, June 29, 1901. Heat brings death and much suffering. Life rendered almost unbearable in the tenement districts. June 30, 1901. New York welts in protracted heat. Temperature on the street from 98 to 106 in the shade. Many dead and prostrated. July 1, 1901. The city of Furnace, virtually deserted. July 2nd, 1901. Heats Holocaust in the five boroughs. 87 deaths. July 3rd, 1901. Heat brings death to over 200 persons. July 4th, 1901. 200 more dead before rain falls. There was tremendous drought occurring in Europe during the 1890s as well. And in the United States. I mentioned in my previous video the tremendous droughts which were occurring in the southwest during the 1890s. Southeast Australia had their hottest month on record during January of 1896. The New York Times referred to it as the hottest of hot waves on record. Talking about hot weather, one day last January the mercury at Adelaide, Australia marked 127 degrees in the shade. That is well over 50 degrees Celsius. And then at the bottom of the article the New York Times detailed an incredible string of extremely hot days in New South Wales during January of 1896. This graph shows the hottest temperatures in Australia during January of 1896. You can see that every single day had temperatures over 100 degrees. There were 20 days over 110 degrees and one day which went over 120 degrees. Temperatures were extremely hot and there were bushfires raging. The Sydney Morning Herald listed temperatures of 117 degrees and 116 degrees. The Barrier Minor newspaper listed temperatures of 121 degrees and 125 degrees. They said, a bad time in Queensland, high records, numerous deaths, and blasted crops. Here's another article from the Sydney Morning Herald dated January 24, 1896, listing a temperature of 120 degrees. Over on the other side of the pond, Arizona had their record heat wave during the summer of 1896. Parker, Arizona had seven consecutive days over 120 degrees, a record which has only been matched once again in the year 1905. Also in 1896, India reported their all-time record temperature of 123 degrees Fahrenheit. There was also a tremendous heat wave in Europe during the summer of 1896. Birds in Spain dropped dead from the heat. In London on July 11, 1896, a sentry on duty at Marlborough House dropped dead from the heat. New York had a deadly heat wave during the summer of 1896, which killed nearly 1,500 people. There was a tremendous tornado during May of 1896, which destroyed much of St. Louis and killed hundreds of people. It turned East St. Louis into a gigantic cemetery. In the November 1896 edition of National Geographic, they reported that the largest glacier in Alaska had retreated 40 miles. If climate scientists were actual scientists, they would want to understand the tremendous global droughts and heat waves prior to the year 1910. But instead what they do is hide it like in Australia or tamper with it like they do in the United States. In his novel 1984, George Orwell wrote, Day by day and almost minute by minute the past was brought up to date. In this way every prediction made by the party could be shown by documentary evidence to have been correct. And that's exactly what we're seeing with government climate scientists. 
Their job, which they're being paid for, is to facilitate the climate crisis scam. They are George Orwell's Ministry of Truth. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.